Okay, let me use uh, let me use the board over here. So I'm going to show that okay in a collection of n cats. So you have a collection of n cats. So let me let me write down the statement. This statement is Pn is in a collection of n cats. Okay, all of them are of the same color. Okay, so this is my proposition. So in, in the collection of, okay, so what is the domain of this n? Domain is positive integers. So we consider n to be a positive integer. So in a collection of one cat, of course it is correct because it, it has just one cat. So all, all of the cats are of the same color. Is that okay? But it is strange. So in a collection of, let's say, five cats, all of them are of the same color. So in general, this cannot be true. I can we can easily give a counter example to show that this is not correct. Let's say you have a Hello Kitty, and then you have a Garfield, okay? So Hello Kitty and Garfield are of different color, right? So immediately, you, you, you can easily construct a case, and then saying that this cannot be true. So even when n is equal to 2, it cannot be true. I just put a Hello Kitty and a Garfield together, and they are not of the same color. So P2 itself is not true, right? But what I'm going to show that is, Let's say we are going to show this by induction, and you need to find out what is going wrong here. OK? Good. Induction. P1 is correct. OK? Now, so this is the inductive case. Uh, this is the basis case. OK, so this is basis case. Now I'm going to show the inductive case here. So inductive case is, let's say, assume that pk is true and then my target is to show that under this assumption pk is true then I can get pk plus 1 so if I have pk implies pk plus 1 and if I also have p1 then I can have all the cases covered okay so pk is true what does it mean so let's say you have a collection of k cats so there are k cats here so, yeah, so this is cat, so there is a cat one, okay, okay, looks like a pig, but it's a cat, okay, so let's say, okay, let me, there is another cat, okay, so this time this is Hello Kitty, okay, no mouth, okay, <laughs> let's say there is another cat, okay, so this kind, of, okay, oh, Okay, this is another cat. There may be more cats, okay? So what we are going to show is that suppose that for any collection of k cats, all of them are of the same color. Now, consider a case that we have k plus 1 cats. So we have cat 1 here, we have cat 2 here, we have cat 3 here, we have cat 4 here, and so on and so forth. Let's say we have now got k plus 1 cats. So what shall we do? This is what we assume, so this is okay. We assume that this is true. In a collection of any k cats, it is true. And now we are dealt with k plus 1 cat. So the best way is to prove this, the best way is to connect this with the, with the situation that we know it is correct. So what we can do is that we take away one cat. We take away one cat. Let's call this cat x. Okay, we take away this x. Take away this x. So after taking away this x, then the number of cats in the remaining collection is k. So they are all of the same color by this induction hypothesis. Is that okay? Is that okay? Now, they are all of the same color. So these, these parts are all of the same color. Is that okay? Now, let's pick a cat here. Let me call it y. Take away y. 
and then we put back x inside. We put back x inside. So after taking away this y, the collection of cats here, it becomes k cats again. Because we take away one, but then we put back one. So it is still k. And then all of them are of the same color. Is that OK? OK, so we, when x is not there, all of them are of the same color. When y is not there, all of them are of the same color. So, so what? So here, all of them are of the same color. All of them are of the same color. So that means that x and y has to be, they have to be of the same color. So, so this case, pk plus 1, will now be true, will now be correct. OK, done. So this is then, then what? We have just shown that pk implies pk plus 1. So, and also we have the basis case p1. So in that case, by mathematical induction, by the principle of mathematical induction, then all the natural numbers, all the positive integers, n, will be true. Something wrong. There ha has to be something wrong here. Bec yeah. Assumption? Yes. What's wrong here? Yeah. Why? Why can't I use P1? Why can't I use P1? Yeah, what's the problem of just showing P1 but not P2? Close. But assumption, I can assume anything. So if you believe my assumption, then I, st I really have. And if you believe that this proof is correct, then I still have P PK implies PK plus 1, right? OK. So I have P1 true, PK plus 1. PK implies PK plus 1, then, then it's still OK. So, OK, not exactly the assumption, OK, but close, something close, OK. Yes, anyone? Yes. 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 Excellent. Excellent. Very good. So this is the case. Okay. So let's assume. Let's take a look of if this is correct. Then P one should imply P two. Am I correct? Let's see if this this is working. Okay. P one is if you have just one cat, then it has to be of the same color. Okay. Of course it is. Okay. Now, assume that. P1 is true, so P1 we now know is true. We want to check whether P2 is true. So by our argument, P1 means that one cat, OK. Two cats, so here, there are two cats here. So when we take away this x, we have just one cat left. And then we can claim that the remaining one is of the same color. And then we do the exchange. We put x back, we take y away. Then the collection still has one cat. And then it's still true the remaining collection is still having one cat and it has to be of the same color. But the conclusion that x and y are of the same color is not correct. The reason is that there is no common cat here. OK, there is no common cat here. So in that sense, yes. In that sense, the, OK, what's, what goes wrong? Is pk implies pk plus 1 wrong or what? P2 is wrong. OK. So pk implies pk plus 1 is correct for all the cases that k is greater than or equal to 2. But when k is equal to 1, then our argument has something wrong. There is no common cat here. We cannot simply say x has to be of the same color as y. Right? Yeah, you, 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 take, you have a white cat and an orange cat. You take away this one, same color. You, put, you exchange, you put this back, and you put the orange uh, cat outside. There's just one white cat. It's of the same color. But then, at this point, we cannot conclude that all of the cats are of the same color. Is that OK? But on the other hand, suppose that you really entered a, a home of your friend, and then your friend tells you that for any two cats, for any collection of two cats in my home, they are of the same color. Now, you can show that all the cats in the home are of the same color. Because P2 implies P3, P3 implies P4. So all the cats in her home has to be of the same color. If she tells you that P2 is already correct, is that OK? Good, very good, very good. OK. OK, so these are the examples that are contained in the slides. And now, let us do something 
I think is interesting. OK? So look at this number. So this is a square root, yeah. So this is square root 2. Is that OK? Square root 2. So from square root 2, I can create another number. Let me call it square root 2 to the power square root 2. Is that OK? And now once I have this number, I can create a number, square root 2 to the power square root 2 of the power of square root 2. Is that OK? Uh, so first of all, what does it mean? How do you evaluate this one? So for this one, so 3 to the power 2 to the power 5, it is you evaluate this part first, and then you evaluate the, the overall thing. So this one is 3 to the power 32, rather than it is 9 to the power 5. Is that OK? So this is going to be a, a, a much larger. So you do this first, and then you do this later. For this number, this will be much larger. Is that OK? OK? So you can continue this process. Square root 2 to the power square root 2 to the power square root 2 to the power square root 2. OK? So let me give it a name. OK? So let's call this number A1. Let's call this number A2. Let's call this number A3. Let's call this number A4. So in general, we can have a number AK such that it looks like square root 2, square root 2, dot, 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 up to square root 2, and then there are k terms. Is that OK? OK. So I have a couple of propositions. So I want to ask, so let's say PK. OK, let's don't do any proposition at all. Let's ask you how, do you, how do we prove this? So I'm claiming that, OK, I'm claiming that um, this sequence is increasing in value. So I'm claiming that A1 is less than or equal to A2, A2 is less than or equal to A3, A3 is less than or equal to A4, and so on and so forth. OK? If I want to show this, how, how, how can we show? Yeah. How can we show that this one is increasing? So let's take a look. Square root 2 is just square root 2 to the power 1, right? And then the next one, a2 is square root 2 to the power square root 2. Which one is larger? It should be square root 2 to the power square root 2. The reason is that square root 2 is 1 point something. OK. And then, and then, and then 1 is 1 point something to the power 1. And then the other is 1 point something to the power 1 point something. So it must be larger. Is that OK? OK? And in general, how do we show? How do we show? How do we show? So how do I show A3 is larger than A2? Any idea? Do it again. Do it again. Yes, how? Yeah, close. Uh, well, not, not close. This is exactly more precise. Argument, yes. What is meant by doing it again? So we know this. OK, so we know that A2 is, let's say we have just shown. We know that A2 is larger than A1. We know. We just shown. OK, we know this. Then how, how can it, it help us? How? How? Yeah, how? Exactly how? OK, so what is A3? A3. A3 is equal to square root 2 to the power A2. Am I correct? Is it correct? And then, actually, we need this one. So these numbers are all greater than or equal to 1. So square root 2 to the power A2 will be greater than or equal to square root 2 to the power A1. Is that OK? And then square root 2 to the power A1 is exactly A2. So we will have A3 greater than or equal to A2. Is that OK? So this is the induction concept. If I know A2 larger than A1, then I can know A3 larger than A2. Now if I have A3 larger than or equal to A2, then I will have A4 larger than or equal to A3. Is that OK? OK? So if you have some previous cases known, so you can build up your knowledge by using the conclusion that you have before, and then you can further show anything. So, so, here, so here, you can let a proposition pk to be something like this. pk to be something like, 
uh, uh, like a k plus one is greater than or equal to a k. Okay, you can prove something like this as your proposition. So the base case will be p one. P one says a two is larger than or equal to a one. Okay, so this is you can prove it. And now once you have proven the basis case, then it is easy to show that if pk is true, then pk plus 1 is true. Is that OK? OK? Yeah, pk is true, then pk plus 1 is true. Because if this one is true, then what is meant by pk plus 1? pk plus 1 is talking about, yes, ak plus 2, right? Why? Why is it true? So we. We are using the same, same way here. If we assume that pk is true, then ak plus 2, so perhaps make it more precise, greater than or equal to 1, OK? Then ak plus 2 is equal to square root 2 to the power ak plus 1, this number. And this number will be greater than or equal to square root 2 to the power ak. And this is equal to ak plus 1. Done. Is that okay? So we have this one, this statement says PK implies PK plus one. Is that okay? Good. Is that okay? So it is increasing. Now okay. So I'm going to remove this part. The next thing is I want to show that. Every number here so it is increasing, okay, and then we want to show that for any number a k for any number a k it is less than or equal to two, so this is my second proposition q k let me call it. A k is less than or equal to 2. So how can we show? Yeah, this is true. This should be true. How can we show? We use induction again. Is that OK? So q1, q1 says square root 2 is less than or equal to 2. And then this is correct. OK? So assume that, OK, inductive case. So do we have this one? If I know q k, do I know qk plus 1? So this is the inductive case. So, so we assume that qk is true. So we assume that ak is less than or equal to 2. Then, then what? Then ak plus 1 is equal to square root 2 to the power ak. OK? And then this is less than or equal to square root 2 to the power 2. And what is square root 2 to the power 2? Square root 2 to the power 2 is equal to 2. Is that OK? So, so far up to this point, if you're OK with what I'm talking about, could you please switch OK. Done. So, this one, we have just shown that QK really implies QK plus 1. So, by principle of mathematical induction, this is OK for all the possible cases. OK? And then what do we have? Now, all the A values, A0, A1, A2, A3, they are increasing. And then they cannot exceed 2. So that means that the limit exists. So the limit of AK as K tends to infinity exists. OK? So, so we may just let this limit and then say, we may just let this limit as L. OK, so let's call it L. So, so we let L to be this limit. Is that OK? And now my question is, what is L? What is L? So how do we get L? How do we get L? L has to satisfy what kind of property? 
if the limit exists, that means that AK and AK plus 1, they are the same. Am I correct? So we will have square root 2 to the power L is equal to L. Is that okay? Okay. So as, as long as we can find this square root 2 to the power L equals to L, then this should be the answer. So how can we find it? So there is no easy way to find this except to understand what is meant by this one. So we, we plot the curve. So we plot the curve. Actually, we plot two curves. Okay, so, so this is y and this is x. Okay, and then this is a curve y is equal to x. And then I'm going to plot another curve. y is equal to square root 2 to the power x. OK? So how, how does this curve look like? Square root 2 to the power x, how does this curve look like? So it grows faster and faster and faster, right? OK, it grows faster and faster and faster. So it looks like, so if you go into this direction, it, it is close to 0, and then it cuts 1. Because when x is equal to 0, then y is equal to 1. And then it goes up, right? It will cut this curve at, at most two locations. OK. I don't know, but it turns out that, let's say, there may be two locations. So this is this curve. Let me plot it here. y is equal to square root 2 to the power x. OK. And at this location, if it exists, and at this location, then we will have what? We will have square root 2 to the power x is equal to x because the two curves are the same, have the same y value. OK. Now, so here, there are actually three different cases that can happen. One is this curve crosses this straight line at two locations. So it touches, it crosses, OK, at two locations. Or it just touches at one location, or there is no intersection at all. OK. But for this case, I will tell you that there are exactly two intersections. So the first one is at x is equal to 2, and the other one is at x is equal to 4. So let's check. Square root 2 to the power 2 is equal to 2, right? And then square root 2 to the power 4 is equal to 2 to the power 2, am I correct? And then it is equal to 4. So there are two locations, <coughs> which means that the value of L could be 2 or could be 4. Which one is the answer? 2 is the answer or 4 is the answer? Which one? 2. Why? Very good, 2. We just proved 2. Well, OK, we just proved that any value of AK is less than or equal to 2. So the limits cannot be 4. It must be less than or equal to 2. Is that OK? So it is 2. OK, now, so how about if we start with a different number? So let's say, let's say the number is slightly different. Uh, not slightly, but it's different. Let's say the number is strange. OK, it is 8 to the power 1 over 8. It's instead of 2 to the power 1 over 2, we have 8 to the power 1 over 8 as this number. And then 8k is like this, 8 to the power 1 over 8. Is that okay? Now we can still use the same idea. So this number, this number, this number itself is greater than one. Okay? So we can show that if you have more and more terms, the number becomes larger and larger and larger. Okay? And then we can also show that for any any k, this number is less than or equal to eight. Well, you can you can do that. It's because you, you can do do the above. It's less than or equal to 8. And then what is the limit of this number? This number to the power of this number to the power of this number to the power of this number. What is the limit? 8? OK, so I checked you. OK, so it's not 8. The reason is that this number is actually smaller than, uh, is it smaller? Let me, let me take a look. OK. So how large is this number? Oh, I didn't copy it here. So this number is smaller than square root 2. Is something like this number itself is smaller than square root 2. So if it is smaller than square root 2, the limit will, will be smaller than 2. Is that OK? It turns out that, again, if we use 
this kind of curve to plot it, then there are two intersections. One is 8, and the other is the correct answer. So the correct answer is a number that I try to use my calculator to, to help. So it's something close to 1.4625. It's not exact, so there are some numbers here. OK. Now, in general, in general, we are asking if I give you a number set, and then set to the power set to the power set up to k times, does the limit of this one exist? Then you will see that when set is equal to 2, then it cannot exist. Because 2, and then you get 4, and then you get 2 to the power 4, which is 16, and then you get 2 to the power 16, which is 65535, five, right? And then you get 2 to the power 65535. Five, I don't know. OK, this is super large already. So it grows, and then the limit does not exist. So there are conditions when, when, when the limit exists. It depends on the value of z. Z cannot be l that large. Z has to be less than or equal to this magic number, e to the power 1 over e. OK, and then, OK, if it is larger than this one, larger than this one, not OK. The limit doesn't exist. So you can think of this as there, there, there will be no intersection at all. OK, and at this location, the number of intersection is exactly 1, which is e. OK, so the limit, limiting case for this case is going to be e. And similarly, z cannot be that small, OK? But it is for another reason, OK? So z cannot be that small. Z, the smallest value of z that it can take is 1 over e to the power e. So this e is the, the base of the natural log. And this is for a different reason, OK? So this is for a different reason. You, you may write a program, so I guess you have the ability to write a program. So, so this number is something like 0 0.065988. If a number that is smaller than this one, then, then, then if you go to have m more terms, then it will not converge. It will be oscillating between two to limiting values. So in that case, the limit of this one doesn't exist. So it exists for when odd number of sets are there, or even number of sets are there. But if you take odd number of sets, and even number of sets is oscillating. So you may go home and check, for instance, let's try z is equal to 0 0.05, and write a program, and take a look of what is the value of z to the power z, and what is the value of z to the power z to the power z, and so on and so forth. And then you'll find something interesting about this one. So you run it for 1 million case. Oh, no, you don't need 1 million. 1,000 case, and then you will see some, some oscillating thing happening. OK? And it is proven that all the values of z, if it is inside this range, the limit exists. And all the values of z, which is positive, but outside this range, the limit does not exist. OK, that's it. Sorry for keeping you so long for today. OK, that's it. Uh, and good luck for the exam next week. OK? Thank you.